Right, yeah, so welcome to Politics Simplified. Uh, we're here. I'm Danny, this is Gabby. We've got uh, guest Stephen Timms on, so yeah, and introduce yourself. What? I'm Stephen Timms. I'm the Member of Parliament for East Ham, Labour MP for East Ham, as I have been for 26 years. Nice, yeah, yeah. Uh, so our first question, a lot of these are given by the audience and uh, people at school and teachers. So the first question is, many young people like deeply distrust politicians and don't really have any trust in politics at the moment. Uh, so, you know, what would you say to them? Do you think that's fair, or what would you say to get them to... Well, politics is the way that our society makes decisions about the future, about tackling climate change, about what we're going to do about poverty. Um, massive challenges our society faces and politics is the mechanism by which those choices are made. So what's really important, I think, is that people engage with it. Do they always get it right? No. Is there an alternative to it? No. So we need people involved, engaged, letting people like me know what they think should be done. And in the end, I hope, we're going to get there. Um, why are you a Labour MP Conservative? Well, uh, I've been a uh, supporter of the Labour Party since I was younger than both of you. And um, in the end, Labour is about fairness. That's what motivates the Labour Party. That's why people join the Labour Party, because they care about our society being fairer than it is. And that's where I want to put my effort as a politician, into making Britain fairer. And there isn't, I don't think, uh, another party that can do that. Mm. Um, so, like, you know, saying that, then why you know, Labour have lost the last election? You know, why do you think that is, and where do you think Labour should go from here mm. to recover? Well, in the last election, we lost badly, but we had a lot of support from young people. And actually, I, uh, I, I wasn't somebody who supported uh, Jeremy Corbyn to be party leader um, in 2015 or 2017. But I will say this for him he has galvanised support for our party amongst young people as no one else has ever done. I think the level of support for Labour amongst young people is probably the highest it's ever been. It's huge. Unfortunately, support amongst old people is not, and that's <laughs> yeah. why we lost the election. Um, but, and that's one th that underlines the importance of young people actually voting, because young people have got really strong feelings about these things, but too often people in their 20s and their 30s don't actually vote. And we really need the message to go out please vote, otherwise things are going to carry on going wrong, and otherwise our society is going to continue to be run in the interests of old people, which is kind of what's happening at the, at the moment. Um, so I'm, I welcome the fact that Jeremy has been able to engage not just support for the Labour Party, but interest in politics on the part of young people. I think that's been a rather remarkable achievement. Um, but we lost, we've got to have a fresh approach, and we're going to be electing a new leader. I'm supporting Keir Starmer amongst the candidates who are standing, but actually, you know, we've got some very talented people standing for the leadership and, and deputy leadership. And I hope once that uh, leadership contest ends at the beginning of April, we're going to be able to be a really effective opposition. That's the first challenge, to make sure we do a really good job in holding this government to account and pointing out the things they're getting wrong. Um, and that we're then able to persuade uh, old people as well as young people that we're the right party to govern the country after the next election. And I'm, I'm hopeful, you know, I'm feeling optimistic. What would you say in regards to um, the climate crisis at the moment and the fact that millions of young people feel like enough isn't being done? Do you think that, uh, say, mainstream parties um, show any kind of real solution or have any real chance at avoiding the crisis? Mm. Well, I think that's a good question, and it is, uh, without a doubt, a really extraordinary development, the way that young people, school children now, are kind of leading the debate on this. And I think that is having an effect on politicians, and politicians are starting to engage with these issues. I don't think we're anywhere near having the solutions yet, but we've at least now got some targets in place. Um, and delivering on those targets is going to take some very big changes in the way our society is run. 
and I think politicians have got to deliver on those things and with the new generation coming along being so focused on this I was talking to primary school children in my constituency yesterday who are very very focused on this challenge um, I think politicians have got to deliver what the solutions uh, have we got the solutions yet no uh, what the solutions uh, are there what, uh, what are they going to be at the moment it's a bit unclear I mean we can see some of them um, the fact that uh, the government has committed to ban the sale of um, you know, petrol cars from 2035, that's a welcome step. Of course, it's 15 years away, so it's easy to say that now. We've got to focus on the fact we need to make real changes, start delivering real changes, and doing it pretty soon. So, with the, <coughs> there being kind of lots of issues that you want to solve, if you could click your fingers and fix one issue in the UK right now, what would it be? Oh, um, something I wanted to fix right now, um, well, uh, uh, this is not about climate change, is that all right? Fine. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I tell you, there's, there's one subject that I'm very focused on, because I've recently been elected chair of the all-party select committee on work and pensions in Parliament and that's going to be dominating my work for the next four or five years. Uh, the one change I would like to make is that at the moment in the government's universal credit system, after you apply for benefit, you have to wait five weeks before you're entitled to money. In the old system, you didn't. You had to wait for about six or seven days. Under the new system, you have to wait for five weeks. That is forcing... They're getting behind with their rent. Some people are losing their homes because they're in arrears. Um, a lot of people are pushed into debt and cannot get out of it. So the one change I would like to click my fingers to make today is scrap the five-week delay. Thanks, yeah. Um, so you're a Christian politician, uh, and that's something that people like Tim Farron have found tricky to deal with in the past. Um, how has your faith guided your politics, and do you think it's made it easier or harder to be a politician as a Christian? Well, I believe that religious faith is a very good starting point for politics because it's the source of exactly the values we need to make politics work. Responsibility, solidarity, patience, persistence, compassion, truthfulness, all of these things, without them politics doesn't work. And I think one of the reasons that politics has struggled in the last few years is that some of those values have been eroded. So. Where can we renew those values from? I think the best source we have is the churches and the mosques and the temples and the synagogues. I think it is in the faith communities and I'd like to see more people with a clear starting point of religious faith getting involved in politics, getting stuck in, taking part in the, the debates and the, uh, the arguments and influencing the way things happen as a result. Um, has it been a... I, I think actually, I mean, when I, when I joined the Labour Party, I was straight out of university. I'd been very active in our Christian Union at university, and I thought that I might be seen as a bit of a peculiarity, a bit of a holy Joe joining the Labour Party uh, when there weren't many of them around. But what I very quickly discovered, and I, 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 my com communities in East London, where there are people who have uh, every faith represented. What I quickly discovered is that for many people of faith, uh, they're much more comfortable dealing with a different person of faith, even if it's a different faith, than they are in dealing with people of no faith at all. So actually, I don't think it has been any, as it's turned out, any drawback for me uh, being a committed Christian. I think probably, um, in some ways, the reverse. So we've only got a few minutes left, so we'll jump to some like, quick-fire questions at the end. So yeah. uh, you can also try and answer in one sentence. Right. See if you can do that, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is from our head teacher. Uh, are school league tables a bad thing? No. Nice. <laughs> uh, does Labour have a problem with anti-Semitism? Yes. Is politics too London-focused? Hmm. No. Who is, uh, oh, who is your political hero? David Shepherd. Um, uh, how would you advise someone who wants to become an MP? Go for it. Uh, join the party, get involved, start attending meetings, see how it goes. 
Pineapple on pizza? Pineapple on pizza? Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm wrong yeah. decision, yeah. Could have ended the interview in a bad way there. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's a good way. That's great, yeah. Great. Thanks for talking to us. Thank um, you. Yeah, it's fantastic. Nice to meet Thank you me. both. Wish yeah. you well. Thanks very much. See you later. <laughs>